Hey everyone, Ollie here. So in this video, I wanted to go through some of my favorite Mac sort of tips, tricks and hacks and other things I've learned just from using Mac for over 10 years now. So yeah, hopefully you guys will learn something. Let's just get straight into it. So the first tip we have is when it comes to taking screenshots. You can actually take a screenshot of part of your screen rather than the whole screen by doing Shift, Command and 4 and then it will show this and then you just click and drag whatever you want to screenshot and there we go you get your screenshot. We can also take this a step further. So let's say you want to take a screenshot of this window. You can do shift command four and then press the space bar and it will let you take a screenshot of the window rather than your whole desktop. When it comes to using Finder, there are two things I always enable when setting up a new Mac and that is the path bar and the status bar. So to enable those, you can go to view and then you can click on show path bar and it will show you where you are in your system. So you can see I'm quite a few folders deep here, but being able to quickly go to those folders if I need to is very useful. We can also do view status bar. And again, very useful. It shows me how many items are in the folder and how many, how much storage I've basically used up. Surprisingly, another thing a lot of people don't seem to know is that you can actually just click on an item and then hit the space bar and it will open it up in a sort of quick preview window. So useful to be able to look at something very quickly and it applies to not just images, it also applies to videos and audio as well. Just so useful. It's a feature that I really wish Windows had because whenever I use my Windows PC, I always end up hitting the spacebar to look at an image and I realize it doesn't work. So yeah, amazing feature to have. Mac OS now has built-in functionality where you can copy text from images. Another one that isn't very obvious but can be very, very useful. So you can see here, this is a screenshot of an article that I have. I can actually hover over the text and you can see the cursor instantly come up and I can then copy that text if I want to, and then copy and paste it wherever I want. Incredibly useful, especially if you get, get sent a screenshot of a website uh, with some text or a phone number or something. Yeah, this is an absolute lifesaver, and it's just so nice to see it built right into macOS. So let's say you're browsing a website and you want to quickly take down a note or copy something. Maybe I just want to copy this bit of text. You can just go down to the bottom right and you get a quick note. You can open that up and you can quickly put a note in if you want to. This is so incredibly handy when you're, like I said, when you're sort of browsing for something and you just want to copy a phone number or copy an address or something like that and have it in a note. Yeah, very, very handy. And again, another feature that's built right into macOS. If you're someone like me who has multiple windows open at any time, you have a bunch of windows all going in all different directions and you want to move a window around, you usually go to the window and then actually move it. But in macOS, you can actually hold down command and then move the window around in the background without actually having to go to the window itself. Incredibly useful, just a handy way to move a window without actually clicking on it. So let's say we're uploading something to the internet and there isn't a sort of drag and drop option. This is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, Imager does have a drag and drop option, but if we choose choose photo and video, it will obviously take us to our most recent folder that we used to upload. But I already have the file here available. What I can do is I can actually drag that file into this window and it will automatically go to it and I can upload the file. No having to hunt around, no having to go through all of my folders or anything just to find this one file if I already have it here in my finder. I can just drag it over and it will automatically select it for me and then I can upload it. Makes uploading files just so much easier. You don't have to hunt around for them anymore. I also wanted to thank Masterworks for sponsoring this video. We're living in a time of incredible opportunity, especially when it comes to growing your money. And a large part of that is the opportunity in the global fintech market. It's anticipated to grow by 20% over the next four years, eclipsing a value of 305 billion dollars, which is perfect timing because with the unprecedented volatility and high inflation rates, JP Morgan recently stated that alternatives are no longer an option. And to meet this increased demand for alternatives, fintech platforms are stepping up, giving people access to investments they would have only dreamed of in the past. And one of them offers a unique asset that's been long celebrated as a way to store wealth. In fact, the ultra wealthy have been using it for decades and now 85% of wealth managers recommend mod investors do too. But where previously it's been far out of our price range, it can now be yours with a few clicks thanks to Masterworks. Masterworks is a revolutionary investing platform that lets you become a stakeholder in multi-million dollar artworks without needing millions yourself. Each of the three paintings that Masterworks has sold have returned over 30% net IIR to investors. Now legally I have to add, past performance is no guarantee of future results, but 30% is still pretty amazing. If you want to join other subscribers, make sure to use my special link in the description below. 
You can use it to skip the wait list and get started on Masterworks right away. So I like to primarily edit my photos in Pixelmator. Now, instead of doing right click and then open with Pixelmator for trying to find the app or whatever, if I already have the app here in my dock, I can actually just select the image and drag it and drop it onto the app itself and it will automatically open it up in my favorite photo editing app, which is Pixelmator. Again, a very useful and easy way just to open a file up in a program that I want to open open it up in. Of course, this applies to lots of other programs as well. As long as the program can accept the file, you should be able to just drag and drop it straight onto the app in the dock. Say you're like me and you like to have a YouTube video or a Netflix video or something like that whilst you're working, whilst you're maybe writing something or whatever, you can right click on a YouTube video. You have to double right click and then you can enter picture in picture and then you can move this picture in picture to wherever you want. You can also hold command whilst moving it and you can put it anywhere you like. You can of course resize it if you like to as well. And yeah, fantastic way just to watch your video, have something on in the background whilst you're working. Um, yeah, I use it a lot when I'm designing stuff or when I'm writing a document or whatever. Say I just wanna watch a video, I can do that. Now you may be wondering how does this work on Netflix? So I can't show you Netflix because it just, it just makes the screen go black. But if you have a video playing and you can see the volume icon here in any tab, you can actually just right click there as well and you can enter picture in picture from there as well. And yeah, that works with Netflix, no problem. So yeah, when I'm watching, say I'm re-watching my favorite TV shows like Breaking Brad or Prison Break or some other TV show, I wanna have it on in the background. I can do that to enable picture in picture for Netflix. So if you've ever wanted to record your screen, you can actually do that with macOS without actually having to download any other third party app. You have to open QuickTime Player first. And then once you've opened QuickTime Player, you go to File, new screen recording and there we are you can start recording your screen straight away you can choose what part you want to record just makes it so much easier no having to use any sort of third-party apps it's built right in so if you have a lot of menu bar icons like i do you can use an app called vanilla which is free and you can hide those menu bar icons so i've just installed it and you can see if i just hit it here i can see what i have hidden and then i can hide it again very useful if you just want to clean up your menu bar and get rid of stuff that you don't often use. These are some of the stuff that I don't often use, so I don't always need to access them. And then whatever I do want to use, I can keep here as well. So macOS has some pretty neat sort of window management functionality, and it's not very obvious because usually when you hover over this green icon, it just makes everything full screen or just make the app that you're on full screen. But what you can do is you can actually hold and click and then you can tile the window if you like. So I can tile this to the left and then I can choose my pages, my Word document on the right, and then it will make them full screen. And yeah, tile them like that. So maybe you're writing an essay or something and you wanna reference something from the web, you can do that. And you can, of course, resize it if you like to. Very useful if you're someone who just wants to focus on doing sort of two things at once, <laughs> I guess you could say. Maybe you just wanna have the focus on these two apps and not be distracted by anything else. You can even take this a step further by holding down the option key and then pressing the button. And what this will do is it will just move the window to the left. And then if I get the pages document back, we can do the same here, move the window to the right. And it doesn't make it full screen, but again, it will just organize the windows to your liking, but then you do also have to resize them manually yourself instead of having them automatically resize. But yeah, a really good way just to focus on one task. If you've ever wanted to access your clipboard history, you can download this app called Copy Clip, which is completely free. And then it just sits up in your menu bar. And when you click that, it will show you anything in your history. A great way to have quick access to your clipboard history. Raycast is another app that I highly recommend and it replaces Spotlight. And yeah, you just press command space and it will bring up uh, Raycast because obviously I've assigned it to do that. So what Raycast essentially does is, is that it sort of supercharges your spotlight experience, you could say. And it does a lot of stuff. There's so many different things here that I'm definitely not gonna have time to go through everything. But yeah, there's just a lot here. So when I open Raycast with the command space shortcut, yeah, we can see sort of a lot of functionality here and what it's capable of. And there is a lot, like I said, there are so many different things here that you can do. And you can, of course, do all the things that you would expect with Spotlight, things like conversions and stuff. But Raycar sort of takes it a step further where you can do things like even search for your Spotify track so you can link it with your Spotify. You can do sort of system things like set the volume. You can shut down. You can 
do just a lot of stuff. You can do window management as well if you want to. Um, yeah, these are just uh, some of the options that it has here. You can of course launch applications and you can do the standard stuff like say I want to do a conversion. So let's do 20 kilograms to pounds or something like that. Or maybe I want to do 100 USD to euros. Um, yeah, there's so many different things you can do with Raycast. And I also think it looks really nice. It's designed really well. And when you go on the website, it shows you a lot more stuff that you can do with it. Yeah, pretty incredible app and it's completely free. They do have a, a, a paid version, but I don't actually use the paid version. I don't need it. The free version does everything that I need it to do. Next up, we have an app called Automator, which is built right into Mac OS. And this thing is pretty crazy because there's so many different things you can do with it again just to automate your workflows and stuff. Um, yeah, so for example, I can set up a quick action and with a quick action, maybe I want to sort of resize images or something. So I already have one here, resize images to 2,700 pixels. So yeah, it will just take an image and then resize it. So here's an image I want to resize. I can just right click, quick action, resize the image to 2,700 pixels. And then it should be at the top. Here we are, it's been resized to 2,700 pixels. Yeah, fantastic app. There's so much you can do with it. There's literally an endless list of things that can be done. But yeah, just a way to automate things on macOS. And like I said, I like using it to resize images, but there's so much more you can do. Next up, we have a pretty cool one that a lot of people don't really know exist. When you're in a Word document like this one, you can right click and you can insert from your iPhone. So you can insert a photo, document or you can add a sketch. So if I do take photo from Ollie's iPhone, it will automatically open up the camera app on my phone. Let me just take a picture of the keyboard, for example. And then I can use that photo and instantly it's in there. That, that just blows my mind how well that works. It's such a cool little trick that just makes inserting photos, sketches and other sort of scans and documents into your Word documents very, very easy. So here's another one that I think a lot of people don't realize it exists, is that you can actually copy text from your iPhone to your Mac. So I can highlight this text, copy, and then I can go to my Mac and then I can just hit paste and it will put it right in there. Super quick. And again, just amazes me how, how useful this feature is. The amount of times I've used it to copy and paste between devices, like maybe links and stuff or whatever. Yeah, so, so useful. So if you have an iPad as well as a MacBook, you can actually extend the display on the MacBook over to the iPad. So yeah, just bring them close together. And then you go to the sort of op options, whatever that is, I can't remember the name of it. You go to display and then you can connect to the iPad and it will instantly make your iPad another screen. You can then arrange the displays by going into system preferences and choosing the iPad screen and moving it over to wherever you like so that when I move over, the mouse will move over as well. So yeah, just a good way to make use of your iPad. If you're not using it and you're on your MacBook, you wanna have more screen estate, this is a fantastic way to do that. And then our final one, if you want to quickly lock your MacBook without having to go to the top left and then go to lock screen or whatever, you can simply just hit the Touch ID button and it will lock your MacBook straight away. Good way to just maybe hide something for privacy reasons or just a good way to obviously make sure that your Mac is locked. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys learned something new. For those who got to the end of the video, please let me know in the comments which tip you like the most. It's just good to see who got to the end of the video or leave a comment of a tip that maybe I didn't cover. Maybe someone else should know. Maybe someone else will benefit from learning or knowing. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.